realization that most companies treat their employees like children came as a very personal one for me. I remember a few years back, I was starting a brand new job that at the time I was incredibly excited to have, and I was in human resources filling out paperwork. Now there's two backstory elements to this that I need to make you aware of. The first one, you can see the way I'm dressed. By no means was I, or am I, an unprofessional dresser. In fact, I've been accused of being slightly boring, wearing suits to work at every turn. The second thing you need to know about me is that by no means am I a rebel of any kind. Rather than being the kids who are smoking behind the gym during lunch, I was the kid who was turning in those kids to the principal. Now, I've grown up and reformed, and I only do that sometimes now, but the important thing to know is that I am not a rebel, and I was hopefully a pretty good dresser at the time. However, my company seemed to think that just by the looks of me, I needed to have a dress code. And not just me, but everyone else in the company. And I was summarily handed one, and it was five pages long. You might be thinking to yourself, how could a dress code be five pages? It went into the most excruciating and minute details about every single way that I was supposed to dress myself every day. It talked about makeup. It talked about perfume. It talked about the length of my nails and the color of my nail polish. It talked about um, shoes, no open-toed shoes of any kind. It talked about the length of my pants. They could be short, but they could not be cropped. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, what's the difference? I can't tell you. But the point was, my company seemed to think that just by the look of me, I needed instruction in minute detail on how to dress myself. Now here's what happened. This is the funny part. I, Dr. Goody Two Shoes, before I even knew what was happening, had started to thwart the dress code at every turn. There was one day that I'm not particularly proud of that I put on press-on nails and came to work to try to see if anyone would notice and send me home. I would buy scores and scores of pants that were just short enough to not be cropped and see if anyone would notice. And the worst time, I think, was when I found myself in a Nordstrom shoe store, which is generally my favorite place to be, but this was not a particularly good day, because I hovered above my body and I realized that I was looking for a pair of shoes that were just so subtly open-toed that no one would notice and I could wear them anyway. And I thought, what am I doing? in a store, in a company that is known for treating its employees in the utmost of ways in terms of acting like adults, I was acting like a child. And I stepped back and I realized that if I trace that behavior back to its origin, it was the moment that I received that dress code. Most companies that have dress codes, most companies that have excessive policies, don't start out with the intention of having their employees start to act like children. But that is the inevitable consequence. So I'll give you a couple of reasons and specific approaches for how you can treat your employees like adults, but I first would like to tell you about some empirical research that says why you should do it. In 1963, a Harvard researcher named Robert Rosenthal was contacted by a most unusual source. Her name was Lenore Jacobson, and she was an elementary school teacher in San Francisco, California. Lenore had an interesting theory. She believed that the way her teachers were treating their students was causing, for better or worse, different performance. And Dr. Rosenthal had researched that for his entire career, and they decided to pair up to find out what was really happening. At the beginning of the school year, they took all of the children in their first grade class, and they gave them all an IQ test. Now, the findings of this IQ test were not actually scored. Instead, 20% of the children who took the test were arbitrarily labeled as academically gifted. Again, there was no reason that they scored this way beyond the fact that they were randomly labeled as being academically gifted. So the teachers received this information, the school year went on, and after eight months, all of the children were tested again. Here's what they found. For the 80% that had been labeled totally normal students, there was no change in their IQ. But for the children, the 20% that had been arbitrarily labeled as being gifted, their IQ actually increased, on average, 15 points. For those of you who are statistics geeks, that is actually one standard deviation, which is just an unbelievable increase. Now, what does this tell us? It tells us that Lenore Jacobson was right. And indeed, the way her teachers were treating their students had an impact on the success or failure of how those students performed. So my truth that comes from this and from my experience in working with many leaders is that what we believe about others comes true. And what you believe about your employees can either foster exceptional performance or it can foster performance that makes them act like children. Let's talk about three ways that you can treat your employees like adults and not children. 
The first is a simple tool that I call act as if. And we learned from the study of the gifted school children that when the teachers acted as if their students were gifted and bright, they became gifted and bright. So I encourage you to think about what are the assumptions that you're making about your people? Are you acting as if they are bright, motivated, intelligent, and capable? Or are you acting as if they need to be policed at every turn? They're not motivated, they're not capable. And whatever decision you choose to make is the behavior that you will receive. Number two, choose conversations over policies. Now, let me just briefly state that 99% of the policies that I've seen organizations enact are because one manager was too afraid to talk to one employee. Think about how much easier it is if you're a manager. Let's say that you don't want your employees to wear jean shorts. And one day an employee comes to work wearing a pair of jean shorts. It's probably a lot easier to go complain to HR that you need to have an anti-jean shorts policy than it is to have that uncomfortable conversation with your employee. And indeed, that, that's what I see many, many leaders and countless organizations do. Because that way, once HR enacts the policy, it's a totally different conversation. You can just go to your employee and say, it's not just me, it's our policy, sorry. So what I encourage you to do is to throw the policies away. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have policies for compliance that you need in your industry or your company. What I am saying is that you should try to take away the policies that substitute for good judgment, even if you don't have policy control, and instead look at the conversations you're having with your employees. So in the situation that I gave you, even though it's harder, sitting down and talking with that employee about how their jean shorts and their decision to wear them is impacting the professionalism of the team. You've got to do it in a smart way. You've got to do it in an honest but respectful way. But 99% of the time, having that conversation versus enacting a policy is what will help your employees act like the adults that they are. Number three, you have to address bad judgment immediately. Just because I'm telling you that most policies are unnecessary beyond regulatory compliance, obviously, what I am not telling you is that you shouldn't be making sure that your employees make good decisions. In fact, in companies that have abolished their policies, the onus on the manager is greater because if you don't have a policy to hide behind, all you have is that moment to address poor decisions and poor performance when it comes up. So going back to our Gene Shorts employee, that manager's decision, as soon as that behavior starts to sit down with them and talk about it, is what will cause the employees and everyone around them to understand what good decisions look like without the policy. Thank you.